I've heard several different pronunciations of this guy's name. Some commentators say Aleem Kanuli, other commentators say Aleem Khanli, and I've heard even other commentators pronounce it Aleem Kanala. I have no idea, based upon the way this surname is spelt, how you would get Aleem Kanala from it. Maybe that's the way it's actually pronounced in the Kazakh language. And if that is the case, I'm not saying it is, but if that is the case, then they should have spelt his surname in English phonetically. Spell it the way it sounds. Because the Kazakh language is written in a different script, right? They don't use English characters. So when you're translating it into English, why wouldn't you spell it phonetically? That doesn't, it wouldn't make any sense to not spell it phonetically, to spell it the way that it sounds in the Kazakh language. I'm sure some people are going to say, well, there are loads of words in English that are not spelt phonetically. Well, no, they were spelt phonetically at the time those words were invented. It's just that the English, English pronunciation has changed over the centuries. And that's why a word like, I don't know, night isn't pronounced with the G-H sound in it. Originally, the word night was pronounced nicked. That's how it was pronounced, because English is mainly a Germanic language, right? Of course, there are influences from rom Romance languages and everything in English, but it's for the most part a Germanic language, and therefore you add words like nicht, which today is just night, right? So when the word was invented, it was spelled phonetically. Anyway, this is actually a boxing video, not a, a video about language. But you, know, you get people saying, oh, you pronounce his surname wrong. These nerds in the comment section. I'm going to call him Aleem, Aleem Kanuli for the purposes of this video. And he defended his WBO World Middleweight title against Denzel Bentley with a 12 round unanimous decision. So it was a successful defense. Now, Aleem Kanuli is from Kazakhstan. So there are the inevitable comparisons with Gadadi Golovkin, his countryman. But stylistically, if you've watched Aleem Kanuli fight, you'll know that he's nothing like Gennady Golovkin. Golovkin, for the most part, is and was a pressure fighter, whereas Aleem Kanuli is more of a boxer puncher. And based upon this fight, what I saw here, he doesn't punch anything like Gennady Golovkin either. He has this uh, Kazakh style slogan on his shorts and what have you. I don't exactly know what that means. Is the inference supposed to be that he's something like Gennady Golovkin, that he's this destructive fighter? Is that what they're trying to infer for marketing purposes? I don't know. But again, in the ring, he's nothing like Gennady Golovkin. I'm not saying that he's better or worse or making any kind of judgment about how good he is. He's just not like Golovkin. That's all I can tell you. Now, Going into this fight, Aleem Kanuli against Bentley. And by the way, Aleem Kanuli got the WBO interim title in his previous fight. And because Demetrius Andrade officially vacated, he was elevated to full champion. So this was effectively his first defense after being given that status. And going in, I didn't, like most people, give Denzel Bentley mo much of a chance because you look at Bentley's career. And, uh, you know, particularly the Felix Cash fight showed some, let's just say, questionable punch resistance. He was stopped by Felix Cash last year in three rounds. And even in his fight prior to the Aleem Kanuli bout against Marcus Morrison, even though he got Morrison out of there in four rounds, he was hurt himself in that one. So questionable punch resistance. Certainly had never fought at this level before. So I wasn't expecting much. And I suspect that Aleem Kanuli wasn't expecting much either. Because the way he went about the job in the early rounds, to me, looked like he was going for the knockout. He was going in there, loading up on that straight left hand. He was proactive. He wasn't someone that was concerned about the fight maybe going the distance or not pacing himself. It's not like he was going hell for leather, punching with reckless abandon, but I've seen Alim Kanuli fight a number of times now, and he's been more circumspect in other fights. But here, I suspect he'd seen the Felix Cash bout. I suspect he may even have seen the Marcus Morrison bout and came to the conclusion that, just like I said, Denzel Bentley doesn't have the greatest punch resistance. 
So he fancied it could take him out early. And I think that Aleem Kanuli misjudged the situation, and maybe a lot of us did, and therefore punched himself out a little bit. And around the sixth or seventh round, he started to really noticeably slow down. And down the stretch of the fight, Denzel Bentley sensing that Aleem Kanuli no longer had the same sting, no, no longer had the same power in his shots, decided that he was going to come forward and try and do something. And he actually caught Aleem Kanuli with some real good punches, and he was fighting him toe-to-toe -to -toe through the, as I say, final quarter of the fight, and certainly into the championship rounds, fighting him toe-to-toe, -to -toe, looking for his big right hand, and he had some success in there. So, yeah, I think that was essentially how it went down. That was my perception of what went down. Aleem Kanuli was by far the superior boxer through the first, let's say, half of the fight. But because he went for it, because he thought he could just get this guy out of there, because he didn't think he was in with much, he didn't pace himself correctly. And, you know, left an opportunity for Denzel Bentley to come back at him with some pretty strong attacks in the second half of the fight. But at the end of the day, the right man won on the scorecards, at least for me. Alim Kanuli retains his WBO world middleweight title. Denzel Bentley gave a good account of himself. There was definitely nothing to be ashamed of there. At the end of the day, he was in with someone who technically is much better than him, who's fought as an amateur at a much higher level, and of course, even as a professional. So nothing to be ashamed of there for Denzel Bentley. I think it will be a good experience for him, and it will be a confidence-building experience, even though he lost, and again, deservedly so. The uh, judges had it 116, 112 twice for Alim Kanuli, and one of them had it 118, 110. Even though he lost the fight on the cards, clearly, he went the distance against someone who's being touted as the next big thing in the middleweight division. So coming off that defeat to Felix Cash, surely he's going to take you know, some consolation, some uh, confidence from being able to go the distance with a fighter of this quality and be competitive, at least in the late rounds. And by that same token, I have to suspect that Felix Cash is going to take some confidence from what he saw in there if he watched the fight, Denzel Bentley going the distance with Aleem Kanuli. Because remember, Felix Cash took out Denzel Bentley in three rounds. I mean, he had no problem whatsoever with Denzel Bentley. And he's going to see Aleem Kanuli having all these issues. Remember, yeah, Aleem Kanuli maybe didn't pace himself very well. But he tried to go for it early on, and it didn't bear fruit. So Felix Cash might be thinking to himself, well, I hit harder than this Aleem Kanuli guy, or I'm a more effective finisher, or I'm better at breaking fighters down. Who knows? But it wouldn't at all surprise me if this has crossed Felix Cash's mind. That doesn't mean that he's better than Aleem Kanuli or he can beat Aleem Kanuli, but I'm just talking from a psychological perspective because a lot of fighters will take encouragement and confidence from things like that. So I'd be interested if uh, there's any interviews with Felix Cash over the coming weeks to hear what he has to say about the fact that Denzel Bentley was able to go the distance against Aleem Kanuli. Be very interested. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Aleem Kanuli's performance here against Denzel Bentley. Did it surprise you? Personally, I was surprised because again, Denzel Bentley hasn't shown the greatest of punch resistance. With that being said, he was very, very defensive and cautious through the first six rounds or so. And when a fighter really doesn't want to get knocked out and they are relatively competent defensively, it can be really difficult to knock them out. But again, Substitute Aleem Kanuli with a prime Gennady Golovkin. I don't think Denzel Bentley would have gone the distance, personally, because Golovkin had honed the tactics and the technique of pressure fighting, whereby it doesn't matter what you're doing defensively. He's going to find a way to hit you and hurt you, and at least drop you, if not take you out. You look at guys who managed to last the distance with a Golovkin at his prime or close to his prime like Danny Jacobs. Yeah, Danny Jacobs still hit the deck, <laughs> right? So 
the fact that Aleem Kanuli wasn't able to, again, speaks to the fact that he is no Golovkin. He's not that type of out-and-out -out pressure fighter. He's more of a boxer puncher. And it doesn't appear that he has Gennady Golovkin-type punching power. That's what I'll say about uh, Aleem Kanuli. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about him. Has this made you reevaluate what you think of him as a fighter? Do you think now that maybe he's not the heir apparent to Gennady Golovkin and that maybe a Charlo or someone else in the division could actually beat this guy? Because he was being touted as some type of boogeyman or bogeyman, right? The English pronunciation is bogeyman. Since I started the video talking about pronunciation and language, well, in England, it's pronounced bogeyman. In America, they say boogeyman. He was being touted as this bogeyman of the middleweight division. Those of you who believed that previously, do you still believe it now? 29 years of age. It's not like he's some spring chicken. It's not like he's got all the time in the world to learn and let's say, grow into his man strength. No, he's got his man strength now. He's not going to get any stronger than he is at this point, or not significantly so. So whatever his power is now is what his power is. And yeah, he does like that left hand from the southpaw stance. It's not an Adonis Stevenson left hand, though, is it? If Denzel Bentley... Remember, Adonis Stevenson was a uh, super middleweight originally. If you put someone like a Denzel Bentley in there, let's say a super middleweight against an Adonis Stevenson in his prime, you think Denzel Bentley is going to take the number of left hands from Stevenson that he took from Aleem Kanuli? I doubt you take one left hand from Stevenson without being on the floor. So yeah, Aleem Kanuli, I'm sure he has this great pedigree and all this kind of thing, but he isn't the destroyer that Golovkin was. He isn't some kind of one-punch knockout merchant. What he is, is a very skilled, from what I can see, technical fighter, decent power, but nothing special from what I've seen so far, fluid, good mover. That, that's one thing I have to say, is that for, and I know Kazakhstan is not in Eastern Europe, but it used to be part of the Soviet Union. It's, I think, Central Asia. For a guy from that part of the world, he is very slick. Normally, those guys from that part of the world aren't particularly slick. There's something a bit mechanical about them, even Golovkin. But with Aleem Kanuli, there's some fluidity there, a lot of fluidity there. So that's one of the things I definitely like about him is the, the fluidity that he has about him. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, is decentralized, and is 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.